keeping cats happy indoors. Can it be done? Yes, it can. My name is Dr. Heather Crawford, and I'm going to tell you how you can indeed keep your cats happy and safe and healthy when they live indoors all the time. Why should you keep your cat indoors? So far, he's lived outside and not had any problems that you're aware of. Why should you go to all the time and effort now of bringing him indoors on a permanent basis? The number one reason you should consider keeping your cat indoors on a permanent basis is to reduce the likelihood of it being hit by a car. You might not think it's very common, but in reality, cats get hit by cars all the time. And veterinary clinics across Australia report that cats are hit frequently. And if they are brought in, they're often untreatable. This means that they have to be put to sleep, uh, or if they are treated, then the vet bills can amount to several hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. For a lot of people whose cats do get hit by cars, you never know the fate of them because they actually disappear. Cats with free access to the outdoors inevitably meet each other. And if they don't meet each other face to face, then they encounter each other's urine and feces. And this is the perfect way for disease, bacteria and parasites to spread amongst cat populations. Even cats that are regularly vaccinated or treated with antiparasitic treatments can still contract these things just by going off of your property. The real way to reduce the exposure to disease and parasites is to keep the cat that you own and love on your property. Free roaming cats are also likely to encounter rodents. And whilst hunting rodents might not seem like a problem, there are, however, several parasites that live in and on rodents that happily live in and on cats. And these same parasites can be brought home to you and your family when your cat comes home. There is also the possibility that your cat might eat a poisoned rodent. And this is because in Australia, we have extensive rodent baiting programs, and this involves putting poison all over suburban and rural areas. Rodents that eat these baits feel sick and they take themselves off somewhere to die. And it's very common that cats and yes, even dogs will find these rats and eat them. The cat might then come home to you and look very, very ill and you won't know why. You might even ignore the fact that the cat's ill thinking, well, it'll probably just eat some grass and feel better tomorrow. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Another reason to keep cats confined to your property at all times is to prevent cat attacks. When cats fight each other, their claws and their teeth enter the skin of each other. And these carry a multitude of bacteria that really proliferate inside the body of your cat, often resulting in a dirty, stinking, weeping abscess that will require treatment with antibiotics and possibly even surgery. An Australian study found that 55% of pet cats at some point in their life will need treatment for a cat fight. Then there is the issue of dog attacks. We know that cat and dog do not always see eye to eye. However, when they get into a physical scuffle, the chances of the cat coming off the winner is actually much lower than you think. A study by Haywood et al. in Melbourne, Australia, found that approximately 54% of cats that were attacked by dogs did not survive to be discharged. That's an incredibly high mortality rate for cats, and it's a really good reason to keep them confined to your property. Free roaming cats are also likely to encounter people. And while not everybody is bad, not everybody is good. And some people really don't like cats and they will go out of their way to harm them if they can get a hold of them. That's also a pretty good reason, I think, to keep them indoors. Another excellent reason to keep your cat confined to your property is to protect the lives of our wildlife. Cats can't help themselves. They just love the little critters that live inside your neighbor's backyard and your neighbor's neighbor's backyard. So if your cat can go from property to property, it has the potential to wipe out a lot of wildlife, even if you don't see it happening. Two Australian studies conducted in Perth, Western Australia, actually followed the activity of several cats over three six week periods of assessment over different years. And they found an astonishing number of prey were brought home by the cats. And this included upwards of 100 mammals, upwards of 40 birds, and upwards of 45 reptiles and frogs. Cats just love little wiggly squeaky things. And unfortunately, the only way to prevent that from happening is to keep them on your property. 
Across Australia, there is an increase in anti-roaming or CAT curfew zones being introduced by Australian councils in an effort to protect the native wildlife that managed to persist in bush fragments across our suburbs. So why not beat the councils to it and bring your cat indoors before it becomes a mandate? So those are some of the reasons why we should consider keeping cats confined to our properties at all time. But if it's so straightforward, then why aren't people doing it? Well, some people believe that it's cruel to keep cats at home. It goes against their nature, which encourages them to go searching and looking for an adventure. But haven't you heard the expression that curiosity killed the cat? Does this cat look like it's experiencing cruelty by being kept at home? Some people don't keep their cats indoors because they do not believe that their cat roams very far away from their house. So therefore, I don't need to keep it inside if he's just staying in the front yard. However, we now have lots of data from all over Australia showing that cats do indeed roam, even if you don't know about it. Scientists in Perth, Western Australia, carried out a study on pet cats in which they attached radio trackers to their collars in order to see how big their home ranges were. You are looking at a map of the home range of Max, whose territory was an astonishing two and a half hectares. Another cat radio tracked by the study was Dustpan, and he has a fairly typically sized territory in a suburban area of just over half a hectare. When you look at the map, you can see that his home territory includes not only the race of residence at which he lives, but his next door neighbours and even some neighbours across some roads, which means that his safety is potentially at risk every time he leaves the borders of his property. At the other end of the home range spectrum from Max and Dustpan is a cat called Kaylee. Kaylee spends the majority of her time sitting in the front yard of her residence. Occasionally, she'll hop next door or a few houses over. Even in that short distance crossed, she risks encountering pedestrians, dogs, and even cars coming in and out of driveways. She's also able to potentially hunt geckos and birds in the neighboring gardens. That brings me to the next reason why people don't keep cats indoors. A lot of owners genuinely think that their cats don't hunt. They don't ever see evidence of hunting, so why should they have to bring the cat indoors? Well, a study carried out in Georgia in the USA involved scientists attaching cameras onto the collars of 55 pet cats and monitoring their activity for one week. By viewing the camera footage, they were able to quantify predation. What they found was that 24 of the cats made unsuccessful hunting attempts to catch insects, lizards and birds. However, 16 of the cats were very good hunters and were successfully documented catching multiple animals. In fact, 39 animals were killed by cats on camera. And of that 39 prey, only 23% of them were taken back home to the owners and deposited on the back step. 28% of the prey were eaten by the cat at the capture site. And astonishingly, 49% of the dead prey were actually just left and abandoned at the capture site. This goes to show you that even if you think that your cat doesn't hunt because he's not leaving a little presence on the doorstep, he probably is. And that's a good reason to keep him indoors. Another reason people don't like keeping cats confined indoors at all times is because they don't like litter trays. Let's face it, nobody likes cleaning litter trays. Cats are very fastidious and they're very fussy about using litter trays that are clean. If you don't stay on top of the hygiene, they're more likely to use the rest of your house as a toilet. So unfortunately, litter trays are a necessary evil. However, nowadays, they make lots of fancy litter trays that will blend nicely into your home. Think of it this way. There's less feces going to be spread around your neighbourhood by keeping your cat indoors and keeping on top of those litter trays. So despite any reservations you may have had, you've decided to bring your cat indoors on a permanent basis. Well done. The good news is that cats are trainable. As long as we make sure that all their experiences during the transition are positive and that you are very good at being able to discriminate between normal and abnormal behaviour, then cats can certainly be trained to be kept indoors and to be happy at the same time.
The most important thing to remember is that cats like routine. So when you decide on a course of activity, stick to it. At the end of the day, you are actually the weakest link. If you break the chain of routine, the cat will remember this and won't take you seriously. In preparation for bringing your cat indoors, the first thing you need to decide is whether you're going to confine your cat to your home only or to the backyard as well. Fence toppers are an excellent way of keeping your cat in your backyard. They look good and they have the added benefit of keeping your neighbour's cats out of your backyard. If you decide you're going to keep your cat in your house at all times, then you might like to consider extending it by the use of a catio pictured here on the right. This is basically an enclosure that allows your cat to have access to the outdoors, but it is unable to escape and get up to mischief. Once you have decided whether your cat's going to live indoors only or indoors and in your backyard, then it's time to get the whole family on board in helping transition your furry friend into your home. Most importantly, you want your cat's hours of activity to match your own. In other words, you don't want to be sleeping when your cat is up and asking for food and vice versa. As your cat is now going to be living indoors at all time, you want to make it a palace for the cat. And this means that there are some items that you need to have ready ahead of time before you transition your cat indoors. One of these is litter trays. You always need to have one more litter tray than you have cats and they need to be in different locations around the house. They also need opportunity to scratch using a scratching post and they love vertical space or hiding spots. So if you can provide some of these around the house, your cat is guaranteed to be happy. You also need to safe proof your house by making sure that there are no snail pellets, radiator fluid, plants like lilies in the house because cats do get stuck into them and they end up going to the vet. Importantly, smaller pets should be securely contained. So if you have any guinea pigs or rats, please make sure that cats can't access them and stress them. Even though your cat now lives inside at all times, it still needs opportunity to look outside and watch the world go by. Window sills are the perfect entertainment spot for your cat. And if you don't have any, then you can buy structures from pet shops that will actually attach to windows and create an artificial window sill for them to sit on. The other alternative is if your cat is allowed access to your backyard, then you can actually buy and install a cat flap. This cat flap can be lockable, which means that you can actually keep him inside the house at specific times. And it can have a microchip reader, which means that it doesn't let other cats indoors. So you're finally ready. The house is prepared. Everybody's on board. It's time to bring your fluffy cat indoors. This is easier in winter, believe me, because during this period, cats eat a lot and sleep a lot. So their preference is actually to stay at home where it's warm and comfortable. Start slowly by bringing your cat in for slightly longer and longer hours every day. And whatever you do, ignore the begging. Do whatever it takes to ignore the begging. Don't punish your cat or have negative experiences with him. Just make sure you don't give in. The best way to deal with begging cats is to distract them with play, a brushing session or food. This distracts them from their anxiety and turns a negative experience into a positive one. Another strategy to reduce the stress that your cat experiences during transition indoors is to use a product called Feliway. This is a laboratory synthesized pheromone and mimics the pheromones that your cat's facial glands produce. It comforts cats, especially when they're stressed and is available either as a plug-in for the wall, as a spray for your furniture and home, or impregnated in the collar that will actually go around the cat's neck and reassure it constantly. So how can you tell if your cat is actually stressed now that it's living indoors? Well, they're not always very subtle and they can emit distress vocalizations for several minutes at a time, often all through the night. They can also become destructive in their behavior and suddenly attack you or your family or other pets. Another big clue is the fact that they may experience what we call inappropriate elimination or they change their toileting habits. They might start spraying around the house and going to the toilet outside of their litter box. So how do you deal with these behaviours and prevent them becoming a long-term problem? Well, 
There's no way around it. You have to make your home your cat's castle. That means jazzing it up and making it the most exciting place so that your cat doesn't want to go back outside because it has everything it needs right here at your home. Some people go to the effort of training their cat to wear a harness and to walk on a lead in much the same way that a dog does. This way you can lead your cat around your backyard or even down the street. Believe it or not, there's also the option of an exercise wheel specifically for cats to burn off excess energy. But the easiest way to keep your cat entertained and make sure that your home is their castle is to provide a range of activities that allow them to explore your home and garden. This includes using food puzzles, providing them with window sills, hiding spots and vertical spaces, as well as scratching posts that you're okay with them destroying. Cats are fastidious about their cleanliness and when they're stressed, they change their toileting habits. In order to prevent these changes becoming long-term habits, you need to get your litter trays correct. This means having at least one more litter tray than you have cat, having them in different locations around the house, and making sure that they aren't interrupted or interfered with while they're going to the toilet. You may also need to experiment with the type of litter because your cat is likely to prefer one type over another. It's also really important that you have lots of positive experiences between you, your cat and your family. And this means using lots of play and brushing sessions to reassure them that your home is their castle. Transitioning your cat from neighborhood wanderer to king or queen of the house can be done and your cat will live a longer, happier and healthier life if you follow some of the tips given in this presentation. Remember to prepare your home and your family for the transition of your cat. Become familiar with your cat's normal behaviour and learn to identify signs of stress and to address these quickly. If your cat is begging to go outdoors, exhibiting aggression or occasional destruction, then have a think about how you prepared your home. Is it really the castle of your cat's dreams? If in doubt, please consult a vet, as sometimes stress can be signs of underlying ageing and disease. I would like to thank GeoCatch and the Southwest Catchments Council for inviting me to talk to you about cats for the Pets Night In celebration. Here are some good references that may help you understand your cat's behaviour and how to solve any problems that arise from the transition indoors. And here are some scientific references that were referred to throughout the presentation.